All Jennifer wanted was a house on her block for her family to live in. She did all the checks before buying the land to make sure she could build. But due to a council blunder, years later there's still no home and Jennifer's now facing a massive bill. A broken woman battling City Hall. I know they made a mistake and uh, the price I've paid is way more than financial. This is, it's emotionally destroyed me. I don't sleep and my children have grown up without a home. A government blunder. They're saying what it's done to her. We're saying it's destroyed a lot. They were deceived. And no one in there is owning up to it. Oh, gee, you're not living here, but nature is. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a disaster, right? <laughs> Five long years ago, Jennifer Peace purchased this small block of land at Manly on Sydney's northern beaches. The single mum was to build a dream home for herself and two young daughters. Then it was discovered the land came with some hidden added extras. Unfortunately, they're everywhere. So there's two stormwater drains, one that runs directly across here and another one that runs through here. So. I can't build anywhere on this land over top of the pipes. But long before she purchased, lawyers and Jennifer dotted their I's and crossed their T's to ensure they could build. I did it, I did it and I did it. So this paperwork shows... And uh, council documents so under property division. burdens and constraints told her there are no council easements across the property. In fact, it went on to say Council mapping systems indicate there are no burdens or constraints that would preclude the proposed development. More council documents kept telling her the same thing. It says there's no works required, it's an absolutely clean block of land and this is council paperwork telling me that. So she purchased the land and later lodged a DA with plans for that beautiful home, which then turned ugly. Uh, I sat there in the room with them and was laughed at as they informed me that the plans were fine, but I couldn't build on the land. Suddenly, the council had unearthed new paperwork. They told me that there were stormwater drains, council-owned assets sitting under the block of land, uh, and that I should have known about them, and that council did not allow building over the block of land. She says she did all the right things. Council told her everything was fine, and then they changed their mind after she forked out a princely sum. The council paperwork clearly states that there are no issues with the land, yet when I try and build, they tell me there are massive issues with the land. Eventually, she saw the council's CEO, who works in this grand building. He was very kind. He assured me that it was a problem um, within council, and he assured me that within two weeks, it would be resolved. That was nearly two years ago. But his bureaucrats eventually gave Jennifer a very unsatisfactory compromise. First of all, they said, well, you can build if you take our pipes uh, out and remove them and replace them, uh, and you need, to pay us to do, you need to pay to do that. And also, we're gonna take approximately a quarter of your land off you as an easement. And then Jennifer wouldn't be able to build on that land with an easement, making it way too tiny to build on or sell to anyone else. And instead they go, you move it and you give us your land for free. Like, who does that? Jennifer believes the mix-up of documents was as a result of the amalgamation of Manly Council, which oversaw her land into the bigger Northern Beaches Council. It's one of the worst I've seen in 40 years of practice. Arthur Carney is Jennifer's lawyer. It's a terrible affront to any kind of notions of decency or fairness. The council have been, no doubt about it, they haven't disclosed that this was there anywhere or in it. it's not available on any public documents. Hey, Jen. There you go. Even the neighbours near her now overgrown land, such as Rob, reckon council is simply cruel and incompetent. I think they're a joke. I do, I think they're a joke. And uh, I don't know what the legal part is here, but, um, you know, it should have been sorted out years ago. Honestly, it's actually crippling me. So the years roll on and she pays her huge mortgage on the useless plot, rent on where the family must live, lawyers, surveys and fees to pursue the mistake that wasn't hers. 
And then she copped this. If you don't build within four years in New South Wales, you get charged accumulated land tax from the State Revenue Department. And so far, I've accumulated over five years' worth of land tax. So we're looking at over $100,000 worth of tax. So, Jennifer, you're paying rates and you're paying land tax on that empty block. I work seven days a week, five in the morning, 11 at night. I don't see my children. She can't afford to take the council to court. So far, the council have fought them at every turn. A full-blown Supreme Court battle with the council would, would cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. The great Australian dream turned into a nightmare, and it wasn't her fault. I don't have any family in Australia. I am a single mum. I did want to prove to my girls that if you work hard, you can do really good things in this country, right? After many discussions with Northern Beaches Council, it told us it deferred Jennifer's bond payment. But Jennifer told us that's not true. The council also said Jennifer should submit a claim for compensation for moving the pipes. But Jennifer says there's no guarantee that she'll be awarded compensation and she won't do the work without it. Council statement and Jennifer's reply are on our website.